Good afternoon and welcome to the instructional handover video for this Burstner Elegance i800. I'm going to walk you around the outside of the vehicle and then we'll move on to the inside. So starting from the side, the mirrors which are on here will fold in manually and will come out and they are electrically operated from the switch inside. The bonnet, the bonnet pulls back and then up. Yeah, now you've got to release it from inside and it does take two hands to do that. That will give you accessibility into the screen wash which is just located there. The oil and the dipstick is just down there. You do have some chassis numbers on the top of here as well and you've got some fuses and jump start facilities just there. You will find it with any A-class easier if you're trying to open or, or jump start the vehicle to go to the battery which is on the, in between the seats. Now if I open the passenger door that is located underneath the flooring area there underneath the mats so that's where you'll find the engine battery probably easier to locate it there just hidden away in this little corner here there's a little pole lever where my hand is there that opens the bonnet so that's where that's located just up there we've got cup holders electric window switches for this door here and your mirror switches for the left hand side to open the door just pull it and that will release it we've also got blinds on here as well for covering out and they're also on the front area which i'll come on to later when we move inside behind here we've got clearly marked diesel so this is where your diesel will go try not to get that confused with your water and that's where your water goes the diesel at the front water behind it lower down we have these little levels here and in the first compartment behind the passenger seat is where you will find your e-box so most of your fuses are located just in this area you'll see there's a stanchion to hold up that door just release it pop it back in and then you'll be able to close and twist and then using the key provided you'll be able to then turn it and lock it in place flush fit like that is locked in place for your onward journey so the water will just unlock with the same key allow you to put a hose pipe in and that will fill up your water there are a couple of drain points and I'll show you one of them inside for the fresh water tank lower down here we've got accessibility to your underfloor there are a couple of manual drains there which if you turn them clockwise will stop water from coming out anti-clockwise will allow you to uh, sorry empty it will anti-clockwise will empty it clockwise will fill it up and if you've got water coming out from underneath of the pipes that's where it's coming from you'll see your double floor runs all the way through and again this is held up with a little bracket which they all have a little clip point for it to go into and again twist lock it and push it in we've got a mains point there to release it you just push the little lever down and pull your mains cable out once you're plugged into mains you'll have mains power to the sockets inside next to that you'll see there's a little sticker with the LPG it is a two-handed job to do this but when it opens you'll see that you've got your regulator which has a changeover valve this will be able to use two gas bottles and with these particular pigtails there's a little push button that you'll need to press to operate this will take two gas bottles in there and please make sure you leave your drop vents clear of any obstructions okay again locking up with the single key which Burstner uses for all their external lockers. Behind that, we have the Alder heating flue. So please be careful, this does get hot. And then we go to the rear garage area. Again, locking and opening using the same key. And then double lock to release it. We've got an exter exterior uh, hose pipe, which will work on hot and cold. You will be supplied with this and it does have a switch button there so you've got to make sure that it's turned off otherwise your pump will keep running inside the vehicle so that's just located there and above it we've got a 12 volt socket the hose is just above we've got the tire inflation kit this particular van will also come with a spare wheel the previous customer had one and then in this cupboard here in the garage area which you access by just pressing the button to the left hand side you'll see that there's two little drain valves you'll need to put them down in the, in the horizontal position 
so just like so to stop the water from coming out and filling up the boiler so down like that is in the usable position up like that is draining and if you do forget it will simply come out underneath the vehicle so that's another one so we've got two in the middle two in the back also in here are the ladders for the bed warning triangle the waist extension your toolkit supplied from Fiat your awning pole and like I said your spare wheel the back of the vehicle we've got the reversing camera so you can adjust the angle of that by undoing the bolts at either end of it and on this side we've got a light once we turn on the power we've got your spare wheel your valve for emptying the wastewater so all you do is press it down with the power on and you'll hear the motor kick in and empty your wastewater and your wastewater will empty from the little grey valve just there and there is some extension uh, hoses that the previous customers left turn it off in the middle position and then you've got an, a, a fast flow in the top position in this cupboard here which again is accessible by pressing it we've got another adapter block and your main RCD box so if it trips the main RCD this is where you check it and this is your test button so if you press it like I've done now when you're plugged into mains it should drop down if you press that and it doesn't then you've not no power going to the vehicle go to the main stanchion that you plugged into and that will tell you whether uh, there's power going to it yeah so again closing these they are alarmed as well on the garage doors by the previous customer so again that will lock the vehicle is also fitted with a Thule Omnister awning which the awning pole is supplied and I'll send you a separate video of how to use this in front of the rear wheel you'll see that there is a toilet set just there to remove it you lift up the little yellow lever and slide it out yeah just going to shut the lower locker first and again that's just the same as the lockers on the opposite side use the stanchion because with that up you'll not get your toilet to set up so let's show you that so lift it up and slide it out there's a little handle to lift it up with you've got to remove the orange cap lift it up and when you're lifting it up, if you press the little yellow button at the top, that will allow you to flow out of the toilet cassette easier. Yeah. And when you finish cleaning it, put your chemicals back in, slide it back in and make sure you hear the click. That means that it's secured in the position and you can use the toilet inside. Further forward of that is the external barbecue point. So that's just there. So this will give you gas from out, inside the vehicle, outside if you're wanting to cook uh, with the vehicle. And then forward of the habitation door, we've got another locker area just there on the little stanchion. Lift it up, click it in place and then lock it in. Just like so. The driver's door itself has electric window switches and mirror switches and then again an opening button just here you can lock it manually just there as well and open it from there blinds on this one as well you'll also see the handbrake is located just down here and there is a fire extinguisher there there is a little section here in here where you will find some of the fiat fuses so that's where you'll go if there's a fiat issue with the electrics try the fuses in there before you look anywhere else We've got an external step and we've got an awning light. And then the habitation door opens by simply pulling the handle. We've got a blind, we've got a storage pocket, and we've got a fly screen. The step switch is just here. So press up and it'll come in. And then press down and it will go down. We've got a little light here, which does the little LED sort of moonlight just there and turns on that step. So you can see. So I'm going to start with the cushions up, just so this will give us access to the fresh water tank. That is under your forward facing seat. And before you fill up your water, you need to turn this little dial clockwise. You'll turn it until it's... The first click will fill up to 20 litres. And then all the way, we'll fill it all the way up to the top. You can fill it up manually by moving the red cap. The other one for interest is just your level sensor. 
So that's where your fresh water is located. Yeah, and that is under the seat here with your cushions. You can also see that with that middle section removed, which is just here, your passengers have foot room and space. There's a lift up panel here, which gives you access to some little storage at the top and then some more storage underneath. Be careful storing bits in there because you don't want to damage the wiring and the old heating pipes. So that is located there. And then I'll turn it back around for you to show you how it looks when it's all set up. And there we are with our seat all made up. So you've got your backrest, your two travelling seat belts, your corner. Your table will move forward and backwards, left and right. And it will also lock in place by tightening up the lower sections. That will stop the table from moving from side to side for you. But it will move all the way across, a good proportion back, or sit in the centre for the living area. On the opposite side, you've got, you've got a reclining system here. So you can pull that down to give you a bit more room. For those that want to put the feet up from the driver's seat, yeah, move the headrest just there when you're going back. So this is just an extra sort of additional space if you want to do that. Underneath it, you will find... So just press the push button at the top and that's where your ledger batteries are located. Yeah. There's also a couple of fuses there. Yeah. And that's so they check that if you're unsure just at the side there with the uh with any power loss to the batteries. That's located underneath that side seat for you. And the button at the top there just there's two batteries on here as standard for you. So if you're changing them, you'll need to change them both together. So, once we've filled up with water and we've closed that water valve, we want to come to our control panel. So you'll turn the button on, you'll see anything that you've left on previous will illuminate. Uh, we've got our ex internal temperature, external temperature, we've got our water levels, so again it'll tell you if there's any water in it. We've got our panel to tell us what power's in our vehicle battery, sorry, leisure battery on this one vehicle battery on that one like I say your water tanks on there to turn the pump on you press that and as soon as you open the taps it will then start pulling the water through should you have followed the steps and closed all the valves you'll want to go to the tap lift it up and the minute you open the valve you'll hear the pump and you want to turn it to hot and pull it through I don't run it if you've not got water on, I'm just doing it for demonstration purposes there because you will burn the pump out. So you want to pull the water through till you get a steady stream and then once you've done that, then you'll be able to select your option of what you want to do the heating off, which I'll come to later in the video. Also, while we're in this kitchen area, you need to turn the gas on. So this is your CP unit here. Yeah, and if there's gas in the system and this has just found some gas that we'd have tested it with, it'll go green. If it goes red, then you've not turned your gas bottles on, just go and turn your gas on. When you want to turn it off, just turn it off and the light will go out. So that's quite an important one to follow as well. On your lighting systems here, you've several options to turn on all the different lights in your vehicle. So the top ones are for the sort of certain areas that will that it will depict. You've got lights off in one big go. So again, you'd have to manually put it back on. You can also pre-program them in as well with M1 and M2 to then set up to a certain light that you like. Yeah. Failing that, you've got other buttons around the vehicle that will turn lights off manually as well. Yeah, so you'll see them around. And to lock that habitation door, you just push that button in. Yeah. The lights underneath will turn off manually just using the little rocker switches. Yeah, and you'll find them on either side just to turn them off. We've also got in here some storage, so you just push the handles down and lift them up. And we've a pack with everything in that the previous customer was given when they bought the vehicle from us. Press the button down and then lift them up. Yeah, your barbecue point is just there. Yeah, so the external barbecue, and you've got the keys for your external shower uh, area just there. Yeah, on to the kitchen area. So to get into your fridge, you push the buttons down and that will open the fridge. Push them up and that will open your freezer and you will be left with a little display.
press the power button and that will give you the manual options either gas battery now the battery only works when the engine's running so just be careful on this it won't work if the engine's running it'll come up with a fault or we've got mains power so you can manually select either of them the option the other option you can do is you can auto select so if you watch it now it's trying to go on gas because you can hear it clicking we've no gas on we put it to automatic and it's flicked to auto yeah we've got a temperature sensor here so turning it to the coolest or the hottest we've got a little blower that blows around to stop it from sticking and then we've got a gas safety valve here so if it's tried to light on gas and you've no gas on it will lock out you'll need to remember to press that button to reset it these little doors here all have little winter buttons so by pressing it in and pulling it towards you it will allow the door to shut a drawer and then by pushing it in again and sliding it back it will allow you to close it properly to turn the unit off you just press and hold the button just there below here we've got a drawer storage unit and you just make sure that that's pushed in before you set off above it we've got an oven and a grill lift it up to give you access you'll turn it one way for your grill and then the other way for your oven as soon as you push it in the light will also come on as well and then the top position at 12 o'clock is where you will turn that unit off so that is your oven and your grill known in the trade as a tech tower here we've got a couple of switches which will turn off the lights in this area here to get into here you just push it and this is where your isolation valves in so as you see at the minute is in the working condition so refer it all back to here to the video or your handbooks will tell you as well below it we've got a little drawer and we've also got a little bin for you there as well here the cupboards lift up and slide out we've got a large bottom cupboard and then above it we've got a split cupboard here with a separate drawer area and utensil area above yeah above that we've got the three burner hob so one two three yeah so they will light and uh, ignite one two and three one two and three just heed the little warnings here yeah, and be careful not to close this when there's been anything hot on it. Above it, you've got a extractor fan with a light. The extractor just comes on there and you can turn it off. We've also got an opening window just here, which will allow you to open it and hold it out, pull it all the back in and lock it back in place. All the windows are exactly the same and they do have flash screens and they have blinds on. In here as well, We've got a little bit of storage and again a little bit of extra storage we've also got an aerial for the tv to turn the aerial on you'll just press a little rocker button at the top just here and then the light will come on to be to move the height you just release the collar and push the unit up to the desired height you can leave that on because as soon as you turn your 12 volt off on the vehicle it will turn off that area the tv itself will come out of here and it simply pushes in and then slides out and it will turn to front and back areas should you wish all the power and aerial cables are all located towards the back of there and the little phone or leads will allow you to to you play music say through on your telly if you want to do that from the cab area there is a dividing door that divides the back from the front that just magnetizes on so you can do that nice and easily there i'll pull it back through to aid as your storage in the bathroom area we've got a flush button here so once you turn your pump on you'll need to press that to flush the toilet the toilet itself will spin around so you can use it around and at the back here you've got a blade valve so you'll need the valve to be pushed towards the front of the vehicle for the blade to be closed pull it towards the back of the vehicle and you'll see that the blade is moving yeah you can only pull out the toilet cassette when the blade is closed in here okay so that's one to remember there in here we've got your alder heating fluid should run between minimum and maximum yeah and we've got a soap holder uh, just there we've got your light switches in the corner you've got your toothbrush holder just there 
and your sink and your tap. Again, when you're purging the taps, do it on there as well as your uh, other taps in the kitchen because it'll help get rid of the air. Push the buttons to release the storage compartment underneath and make sure that they're locked in before you onward travel. We've got a little hook here for hanging up your towels or your bathrobes. The heckies, simply pull that, push the button and pull the lever, press it back up and lock it in place. And we've got fly screens and blinds on those as well. That's the same in the bedroom area. And the windows, albeit bigger, are the same as the side window. Underneath the bed, we've got a storage area here. So we've got a couple of little drawers that pull out. Press the buttons up to move them out. We've got a storage area here, and then we've got a little poof to sit on. Why would you need to sit on it? Just there, because the bottom of the bed lifts up, and gives you a nice little changing area, should you want to do that. Just there. To close it, just gently with your hands, and it will do. And that actually originally, albeit it's never been used on here, was designed to go in there, nice and neatly, and then allow you to close the doors to hide it away. Yeah. Now on the bed, to this side we've got a plug socket. We've also got a little false step. So pull that down for those that need a bit of extra help getting into bed. In the bedroom area, we've got a memory light switch. So that will turn certain lights on in the bedroom area, put it into night mode. So similar to the buttons on the control panel. In here, you'll push the lever towards the wall to open it up and you've got storage in there. The back ones will work the same way as all the other drawers, so pinch them down, open it up, and then on here we've got a little light that turns on on the other side to illuminate that as well, and little storage pockets at the back. We've also got a shower on this side, pull towards you, and again, when you're pulling through the water, just prime that water system through. That will allow you to get any air out of the system. To the right hand side of the bed, we've got a couple of light switches in here as well. We've also got another footstool that comes down and we've got the heating system. So this is the Alder heating system control. So if you turn it on, it will illuminate and light up. You wanna to go to your menu, or sorry, go back to the beginning. Turn it on, start again, I missed one of the bits. On here, when you press that, you'll see that uh, plugged into mains. So there's an element to tell you that you're plugged into mains at the top, so you'll see it. You then want to come in here, you can set the temperature inside the vehicle. So it's all touch screen. So the minute you touch it, it will then reduce the temperature. You've got the water option just here, so you can turn it up or you can turn it down. Yeah, just like so. You've got your options to do it on electric. So this will give you one two and three kilowatts so you can choose or you want the gas on or the gas off so basically you're deciding with the four options what you want to do there are some timer functions that are available but get your head around the basics first of all the temperature in the vehicle the water whether you want it on a normal temperature or whether you want to boost it say after a shower then you can do that you've got the source that you're trying to do it with either electric or gas, yeah? And that's the simplified version of it. You can look at the handbook, look at other videos that are more technical, but that generally is the easy way to remember it. Electric, gas, water, and heater temperature. You press it off and it will turn off the system completely. Got a mains plug on this side as well. And the heating system. So once you get the heating system running, it will circulate through the vent throughout the vehicle all the way around you'll see there's a radiator in the bathroom area and then various different points throughout the vehicle in this back area again you pull it towards the wall you've got a hanging area and then this will slide out as well yeah so you can get easier access to those clothes and again we've got fly screens and blinds on the windows We've got a carbon monoxide detector in here and your PIR unit for the alarm system that was fitted from there. In the middle, we've got an opening hecky 
So you just release all of the clips and then that will go up, pull it back down and lock it in place for your onward travel. Make sure they're in the locked position before you do that. At the side of the control panel, what I missed, there, that is your thermostat for the heating. Yeah, so that's how it gauges how hot it should be in this area. We've also got a smoke alarm as well in here. And then we've got the drop down bed. So to drop down the bed, you'll need to first fold the seats flat. To do that, they have a quick release mechanism on the side that you just pull and hold, and that will drop the seat down towards you so that you've got enough space then to drop the bed down safely. So just give it a little bit of an extra one. So you'll see the seats are just there. You can do it this way or you can do it with the seats for facing forward. Then what you'll need to do is just press the down button, press and hold it, and that will put the bed down. It takes a few seconds and just make sure that there's no obstructions in the way, but it should clear the area there. Like I said in earlier in the video, there are ladders which you can put in the way there, or you can simply step up from here. We've got your own light. The blind will come down to, to screen it off, and we've got a hecky similar to the middle ones to allow you to have ventilation in that area. If you ever need to put it back up or reset it, sorry, then what you'll need to do is press the R button three times. Take it all the way to the top and it will go past the vertical. So keep your butt, you've got to keep your finger on the button. And you might have heard that little small chime it beeps two times, like doo, doo, doo. that is the reset and it will drop back down and allow you to do it and reset it. Sometimes they go out of sequence, so that's the reset for it. Okay, into the cab area themselves, the seats will swivel round, all the way round. And you'll just need to use the slide bar in the front here to just make sure that you've got clearance around from the seats. You'll need to do it on here to make sure you have clearance from the handbrake. And then you'll need to pull the handles upright so it moves the steering wheel. You do need two hands to do this though. Now the seats themselves have adjusters on the back and the front. And you push that forward to release the vehicle to swivel round. Yeah. So in this cab area, you've got jack points here. You've got fog lights, hazard lights, lock button, which will lock the habitation door as well you've got air con you've got passenger airbag you've got a cooled area for your uh, air conditioning when you've got that on if you want to put anything you want to cool you've also got the update for the Zenit unit if you need to update anything that's where you would plug it in and then we've got the Zenit head unit which does go into a sleep mode so if it ever does you put the power on the control panel come to it and it will kick into life we've got a seat, uh, DVD player just on there. The volume button is at the top. The home button will then come up and tell us where that is. You've got AM, DVD, options. If you put it to the to the home screen, it will then give you sort of camera options. So we've got the reverse camera option, just comes up there. We've got DVD option, FN option, home option. And then if you use the little buttons at the top, that will give you accessibility to your Bluetooth, to turn the unit off. To turn it master off, you press and hold the button just there. And that will work that. On here, we've got a step indicator to tell you that it steps open. At the top, we've got the lights. And the indicators, lower down we've got the cruise control which is on and off just here. We've got the windscreen wipers on the right hand side, trip counter on the end. And we've got a mode button just here which will take you through to the main screen settings to change times and things like that. 
we've got the ultrasonics here for the alarm system in the middle we've got the robotized gearbox and above it we've got the little ratio button which you'll be able to press if you're starting off on a muddy icy track it'll just give you a bit more traction we've got the blinds that simply come along here and magnetize on and then the front ones just unclip and meet in the middle with the one from the other side so you've got a nice screened off area we've got some light switches in the cab areas as well and we've got some little cup holders areas on either side and then we're back up for our use one other thing that we have got which is quite useful when it gets starts getting colder if i just spin the seat around you'll see there's a little switch down here on the end of the chair so this is a preheat button so if the engine's running you can preheat the alder heating system yeah to, to warm it up ready for it yeah and that's the button that you turn on and off that so that's your preheat button yeah and that's located on the end of the chair on leaving the vehicle you simply press off the main master button here which you'll see has a little indicator here and then you turn the lights off and you'll be able to move on so that concludes our instructional video for this elegance i800 i hope you find the video useful entertaining please like and subscribe to our youtube channel and most importantly though we hope you enjoy your new motor home thanks for watching bye now